Zoom recording has started. Ready when you are, Tom. Good day, everybody. Uh, Tom Judd from IFMBE Clinical Engineering Division. Uh, we're delighted to have you here today, uh, our second monthly webinar. Uh, make sure everybody checks CF, ced.ifmb.org uh, back, uh, backslash webinar or front slash webinar to check for more webinar locations. Um, this is our uh, second monthly webinar. Our third will be next month on uh, March 18th. And we look forward to having you join us there as we begin to talk about 10 competencies and uh, 10 clinical engineering unique competencies. The first one will be health technology management. We're delighted also to have today uh, a board member, uh, Almir, Dr. Almir Bajovic, Professor Bajovic from Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. He's gonna tell us more about himself and tell us about metrology. Thank you, Almir, take it away. Uh, hi. To everyone, good morning for uh, you guys who are where is the morning and uh, good afternoon to all of you where it is now afternoon. Uh, thank you, Tom, for introduction. Thank you, Liz, and other guys who are working with uh, CED uh, division on, uh, on on these webinars. And uh, I hope so that uh, this will become some kind of the practice show all over the next year so. I hope so that uh, everyone can hear me. And uh, today, as uh, Tom already mentioned, uh, I will try to say a few words about the metrology basis for clinical engineers. So I will uh, show it through one uh, example of uh, establishing the lab for, uh, which is in fact working in this uh, field of uh, metrology, but metrology with uh, medical devices. But through all that story, I will talk about the basic terms. So, uh, uh, so what what is something what are the what is the let's say the content of this presentation uh, first I will say a few words about myself who am I and where am I working then after that I will present the current state and what was the motivation how to start this then uh, we will talk a little bit about the development of those inspections of medical device then about the solution, how to solve it, one example also, and then I will show also some uh, case, uh, case study results from 2015 up to 2019, and uh, then just shortly I will present some future research in this area. So first of all, as uh, Tom already said, and uh, what you can see from uh, my presentation, uh, I'm the, one of the board members of the Clinical Engineering Division at the International Federation of Medical and Biological Engineering, here you can see the structure of uh, and uh, to see where it is in fact IFMB when you look all those um, United Nations organization the, on the right side you can see also the what is the vision who is the chairs and who are the other board members uh, additional also we had uh, one uh, good contribution in the as a program committees at the fourth global forum on medical devices which was organized by the WHO and those are the some of the topics which we, uh, which I talked about on the, that uh, forum, what was held in India. Uh, when we are talking about uh, European level, uh, there is a European Alliance of Medical and Biological Engineering, which is also the part of the, it's calling the EMBES, and which is also the part of the IFMB. And there I am the treasurer and also a counselor for the regulatory affairs. Uh, when we are talking about the IEEE, uh, I am the board member of two technical committees. The one is Technical Committee for Cardiopulmonary Systems, and the second one is, in fact, the IEEE standards. From those IEEE standards, uh, in fact, two years ago, uh, we started one, uh, one new group of the standards. Uh, it's calling P2727. And that uh, series is in fact standard for general uh, vocabulary for conformity assessment of medical device with the measuring function. And in that standard, you can find in fact uh, the old basic terms and other things which are interesting for the uh, medical device with the measuring function. Uh, dot one, the series of this standard is in fact a uh, standard for conformity assessment testing for cardiac defibrillators for legal metrology purposes where we describe in fact uh, what is the most important uh, metrology concepts and the points which we should take care when we are talking about the defibrillators. Of course, 
the other standards, which will be dot two, dot three, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, will be will be done by uh, will be uh, let's say developed by the same uh, people in the same uh, under the same uh, series. Uh, there is also one uh, European organization for education st uh, students in engineering in medicine. It's one uh, pretty old organization. It's calling ESM, and we are doing different projects there also, but mostly for the students. Uh, when we are talking about the publishing, uh, there is one book which is calling Inspection of Medical Device for Regulatory Purposes, which is published by the Springer Nature. Uh, I'm one of those editors. Also, the whole session in a clinical engineering handbook, which is calling Medical Device Standards Regulation and the Law, is in fact also written uh, by our team. And in 2018, we can say that from the Clinical Engineering Division, from the IFMB, we received uh, the best uh, manuscript award. When we are talking about academic se sector, I'm working at the University of Sarajevo and also International Birch Universities at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and the Faculty of Pharmacy. Uh, and uh, when we are talking about the business part, uh, I'm working also as Director of uh, Medical Device Verification or Inspection Laboratory Verla, which I will talk li a little bit later about it also, how it becomes. So let's start, in fact, with the current state and motivation. This is as the second part. Uh, probably many of you, and uh, especially every day, we are uh, who is who is in healthcare uh, present. Uh, you can see that if you go, for example, in one hospital, in uh, even in the same country, and when you do all the diagnosis tests, all the uh, doc when the, when the doctors look at you, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, you got one diagnosis, you got those measurements, for example, the blood for the MRI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when you go, for example, in another hospital, uh, they are repeating all of those uh, measurements to you. This is especially interesting, for example, if you go in one hospital in one European country, and then later on, if you go in another European country, they will repeat you all those uh, tests. So a few years ago, we started to think about it. Why is that like that one, why, why are we repeating those tests if they already has our blood result test, if they have our MRIs, et cetera, et cetera, spirometry, and et cetera, et cetera. And then we saw that uh, any of those uh, medical tests, in fact, biomedical tests, they don't have any kind of, uh, that is how it's calling, measurement traceability or, or uh, measurement uncertainty in, uh, in their results. So we said, okay, where, where it is all included and where, why it's not included, in fact, in uh, medical measurement. Then we started to looking why it's important, why it's measurement important, and where, it, where are those terms already included. So, for example, uh, we, ca uh, we found out that when police officers catch you uh, with those radars, for the big speed when you are driving, uh, those radars are in fact calibrated and they're tested by some, let's say, national national laboratory or accredited laboratory. If we are, uh, if we are looking about the weights uh, and the scales for the people who are selling, for example, fruits or not even something what is very accurate, they also, the country said by the law, you, has, uh, you have to test those, you have to calibrate those devices. When you go to the gas station, to the petrol station, you will see later there also that they have some marks that uh, it has to be, and it's written by the law that it has to be tested somewhere. It is one year, once per year, somewhere it is uh, twice per year, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that each pistol should be tested is a liter, really liter. And then the question was, the, the main question was, why if the most important measurements are in fact done in uh, medicine, if our health is the most important thing for all of us, why the country didn't say anything about that something really must be measured, all of those devices for the making diagnosis or in the treatments, and why we are not asking for the calibration certificates from all of those measurements, for example, for the flow, uh, in some devices for the pressure, in some devices, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and why it's all left just to the customers and their recommendations. And the the, the basis uh, the basis uh, example is in fact uh, the kilo. Uh, if you took one kilo of banana everywhere, anywhere in the Europe, one kilo is everywhere, even in the USA, in Asia, in Australia, in Japan, wherever you go, one kilo is in fact one kilo, and everyone trusts in it. But when you uh, put on the scale a baby of who is newborn baby, three or four kilo, which has a uh, kilo. When, when, you, uh, when you measure it, for example, in incubators, while, it's there, uh, while that baby is in fact on the treatment, and when you go to another hospital, they are not uh, 
respecting and they are not taking into account that measurement. They just took it as information, but they are measuring it again. But they are not measuring it in many, many uh, other parts. So the base, the, and when you go deeply, I will show it later on, when you go deeply into metrology, they said that the most important part why the metrology is established is uh, in fact to start and uh, to improve the measurement which are the most important for the, pub, uh, for the public health and also for the, for the people like for all of us, for the patient. But when you look at the all uh, technical, uh, technical regulation and other things in metrology, they didn't really uh, develop uh, very well, very much of those procedures there. When, when you go uh, deeply and when you check what the WHO is doing there, you can see many countries uh, with different colors here, and you can see which country implemented all three, uh, all three uh, parts. There, when I say the three parts, it means all the pre-market activities, then the post-market, but the post-market that when you, when you just buy device and all the post-market later on when it is working a few years already there. So you can see that, for example, the many, many of those countries has implemented many of those things, but there is also a missing, missing countries, especially in that this uh, third the third uh, option, which is in fact covered by the new medical device regulation, but we will mention it also. When we go to the numbers, when we started now with the numbers, because if you want to change something, you, you have to find the numbers because those numbers must prove what are you doing. For example, in the last 10 years, we can find, uh, find of the, uh, on the uh, US uh, Foods and Drug Administration or FDA, that uh, more than uh, 800 of the patient was that because of the problems with the infusion and perfuser pumps, that more than 700 of the people was dead and more than 1,000 was injured by the defibrillators, uh, more than 500 was injured by the pediatric incubators, etc., etc. But take care that uh, just uh, that, that the many countries at the world are not in fact reporting those uh, the information like this one in the uh, FDA, uh, US FDA. So uh, for sure, those results are much, much, much uh, worse than it, is, uh, than it is presented here. Even those results are pretty, pretty bad. So that's all the some things that uh, we should change and we should do something with a medical device. And if we want to get better devices, we, has to, uh, we, ha we have to start measuring. And if we want to measure it accurate, we must do it by the metrology rules. So how we started with our development? First of all, we found out that uh, we should take care about three different segments. The first segment is medical devices because that's our topic. The second uh, segment is in fact uh, metrology because the metrology is something what we want to introduce into the medical devices. And the third segment is in fact standardization and the standards because if we want to implement metrology into the medical devices, we have to do it by some kind of the standards which are already developed. From the medical device, if we start from definition, this is the definition of uh, medical devices and it's much more uh, similar or even the same at the uh, European Commission at the WHO or even the FDA. And all of you can read it and I'm sure that all of you know these definitions here. Uh, anyhow, when we, when we divide devices, we can say that all medical devices can be, for example, for diagnosis, for the treatment and the rehabilitation purposes. And these are the different uh, devices which are shown here. When we are talking about the medical device directives, there are in fact three different directives, uh, especially if we are talking about the European Union, but it is also on an uh, international level. Those three uh, directives are in fact uh, presented here in this presentation. And when, uh, when we are doing anything uh, regarding those directives, we have to have some kind of certification prior marketing, then we have to do the marketing, registration, incident reporting, post-market surveillance, and that's all uh, some actions which are followed by, uh, by each medical device, and it was in fact before. But all of those problems which I mentioned was, uh, was recognized and was developed by, uh, by during the life cycle of these medical device regulations. Because of that, and because uh, you know, the, I, I, I like to say that the directive is something like a Swedish table. Uh, you can take it where, whenever you want, and you can implement it in your country whenever you want. 
So, and then also you can choose some parts of the directives which you like and which you don't like. So each country in fact uh, um, developed it on the different way. That's the reason and that's the one of the most important parts why the uh, new medical device uh, called is regulation, not anymore directive. Why regulation? Because when you have a regulation, then uh, it's must, it's low, and uh, you must implement it. Even on the European Union, in uh, European countries, it will be must, and uh, each European countries will must implement it uh, from the May of this year. So now we are in fact in this uh, transition period. So we are waiting for this uh, May 26th uh, of this year uh, for the implementation of the medical device uh, regulation. And uh, many many notified body already already implemented uh, on European Union for for this purpose there. But the most important part is that uh, we we must really admit that pre market pre market. Uh, pre-market procedures in the directive was pretty good. And uh, with the pre-market, it was pretty well. Uh, the history of pre-market was really good, but the post-market was uh, too bad. And that's the, that's the reason why, the, for example, this new medical device regulation for the old people who read it, uh, who, who, uh, yeah, who read it uh, has the whole section which is called, in fact, medical, uh, which is called uh, post-market surveillance. And they are taking care very much about uh, what you should perform when uh, when when you change and when you uh, when your device is already on the market for example one two three five ten years uh, ten years there uh, to to test the medical devices there is also something what is very interesting it said that all uh, the, that conformity assessment and the testing of medical devices under the notified body will have to be performed by accredited laboratories. So when we said accredited laboratories, we are already in metrology because uh, to be accredited laboratories for the testing of medical device, you, uh, all your etalons, all your very accurate measuring devices must uh, have established traceability. And we will mention it later on, what is that? Uh, up to SI units. So it means it, uh, all of those devices must be, uh, must be calibrated there. So that's uh, already, uh, uh, through that point, the metrology is very included in, uh, in this uh, medical device regulation. So let's talk about some terms in metrology which are uh, very important for the medical devices and anyhow for the metrology. When we look at the metrology, there are in fact three basis activities. The first one is that uh, it is the definition of internationally accepted units of measurement. And if you remember last year, it was, uh, Pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting news that after more than 100 of years, the definitions of the kilos of the ampere, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it is changed. Uh, of course, for us as uh, end users, it doesn't mean anything at the end when we are measuring. But of course, for the scientists, it uh, and uh, for for some um, research, it means uh, very much. Uh, why it's important, for example, for the, for the definitions of kilo, if you remember, it said by the definition that, that before they had some kind of the etalon, which, uh, etalon of one kilo, which stayed in museum. But when they check it uh, in the last few years, they saw that in the last one, uh, 100 years, it's changed, I think, more than 50 grams there. But they don't know why it's changed. So that was the reason why they started with the changing of, uh, changing of uh, definitions for the kilo and all other things. And uh, from another point of view, uh, there is uh, something, you know, that uh, what other, uh, the basic SI units are there and uh, what are in fact derived SI units. But there is now the whole science and it is proved that all, uh, S, all other units are in fact derived from the time, from the second. So uh, now, now, now it's, uh, it's even, there, there is one formula which is showing that uh, each uh, unit can be in fact proved uh, and uh, is in fact derived from the second. But that's something what is uh, for maybe other discussion here. Then the, the second point and the second uh, activity of the metrology is in fact realization of uh, SI units uh, of measurement in practice. And the third one is application of uh, chain of traceability. It means the linking the measurement to reference uh, standards in each country up to national at, uh, and uh, on international, in fact, uh, where the, each of these, uh, let's say, country must has uh, some kind of traceability with international uh, standards. 
when we are talking about uh, metrology, there is also three different uh, fields of metrology. The first one is uh, scientific metrology, and this is uh, definitions of those uh, SI units, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then industrial metrology, when we have some different kind of uh, industrial uh, concept, different industrial uh, measurement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the third one is in fact the legal metrology. It means that uh, that are some kind of uh, regulations which are written by that country that per the law you have to do those inspection tests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Some of the main uh, and the basic metrology uh, terms are the first of all, it's uncertainty. Per definition, it's some kind of the value which is associated with the measurement, which expresses the speed of pass uh, possible values associated with the measurement. It means how much it can go plus minus uh, somewhere of each of that measurement. But on that measurement uncertainty, all the factors are in fact calculated in that plus minus. Then the second one is in fact the traceability. It means where is your measurement, uh, how far it, it is from the definitions of these SI units. And it is, of course, showed and proved through the uncertainty and calibration. Uh, calibration is, in fact, uh, the procedure where you are calibrating your devices with much accurate devices. And through the calibration, you can read your traceability and you can catch your uncertainty based on that. So when you have calibrated devices, you have, in fact, established, calibrated it means uh, per ISO 70025. It means that uh, your devices has uh, established traceability up to SI units, and uh, your measurement can be uh, can be presented with uncertainty, and which is showed how it is far, in fact, from some kind of definitions of that uh, unit, which is in fact the basic one. And the third part and the third segment here is in fact the standardization, as I said. So we started with the reading the standards and looking what the main standards are in fact, uh, what are the main important standards here. And uh, when we are talking about the medical device, there is definitely ISO, there is definitely International Electrical Commission, and there is also IEEE standards, uh, which are here. All kinds of standards, uh, when it is on uh, international level, uh, each country uh, does some kind of adoption, mostly it is just a translation on your language. So then it's called national standards. After that, uh, those national standards can become some kind of domestic common practices. So uh, if we want to make some kind of technical regulation at the national level, we have to use the national standards and the uh, different kind of those domestic common practices. And then we are uh, by station, we are getting those technical regulation. When we check on the standards for the medical devices, basically we can, uh, we, we can divide it in three groups. The first one is basic safety standards. And all of you heard about the uh, ISO 13485, uh, which is for the quality uh, management, then application of the risk management, management application of usability engineering to medical devices, etc., etc. The second one are the group safety standards. And for example, by this regulation, by this directive uh, before, many countries, in fact, took these uh, norms, took these standards, uh, especially this uh, 60601 for the testing of electrical safety of medical devices. And they are, uh, they are using it. And of course, the third, uh, the third group is, in fact, the product safety standards, which are, in fact, mostly some kind of the vertical standards which are used there. Uh, when we are talking about the, about the metrology, uh, when you want to use the legal metrology, then there is different kind of the committees there uh, under the OML, how they call it. So uh, when we check at the OML, what are they doing, in fact, from the point of medical devices, uh, we can find out that just three different, three different uh, technical committee are doing something which is directly related with uh, medical measurement. So these are the three markets here, but the main, most important is in fact this uh, 18, uh, technical committee 18, where it's in fact medical measuring instruments. And uh, it, is, uh, it is lead by the German PTB. But now, for example, a few days ago, we really checked what are the most important activities now. And they said that there is no too many uh, active people who are interested in fact to work on the development of those uh, technical committees. So uh, this will be definitely one of the points which I'm planning to suggest to Tom and the other guys in the clinical engineering division how to start, in fact, and how, where, where maybe uh, CED can be included there. 
So when we know all of those three, uh, three parts, it's uh, medical device, metrology uh, concepts, and when we know the uh, third one, which is in fact the standards, we can, uh, we can start by uh, looking for solutions. So the solution in this case for the testing and inspection of medical devices is in fact presented here. What does it mean? It means that for the medical devices, the most important are the safety, performance, accuracy, and reliability. How can we uh, get the safety? By doing inspection by the, and by doing tests, by doing uh, uh, 60601 electrical safety uh, standards. How can we uh, test performance? Again, by doing inspection, but per ISO 70020 standards. With what we will do this uh, inspection? We will do it by using our etalons, which will be in fact calibrated with the established traceability by using 70025 standards. Based by doing inspection with the etalons, which are calibrated and which has established traceability, we are getting the safety performance and accuracy and reliability of our medical devices. Now, when we introduce this to medical device regulation and the new norms which are presented here, all of those activities will be performed by the laboratories, which will be under the national bodies, in fact, notified bodies of each country. What are we getting here? We are getting, in fact, a traceability chain. Uh, uh, it means that uh, each medical device and each measurement, for example, uh, this picture down is, in fact, with, uh, as, with our country uh, in our solution. So uh, if we have the doctor, who is giving diagnosis, uh, and uh, they, are, they are writing that diagnosis based on the measurements from some kind of medical device. That medical device is tested per the uh, inspection laboratory. In this case, this is Verlab. All the etalons are, in fact, calibrated per the National Metrology Institute. So the uh, traceability chain is now established up to National Metrology Institute. And National Metrology Institute has calibrated devices per the primary standards, which are in fact calibrated per the SI units. So when the doctor now write diagnosis based on the, some kind of the measurement, it has correctly, and the, th those, those measurements of these medical devices tell us the, what is that plus minus and how far it is in fact, and how, un, uh, let's say, an accuracy is in fact from the SI unit, what are the uh, what is the uncertainty, what is, what are the, uh, how efficient is this that measurement, etc., etc. When you come now uh, anywhere in the world with the measurement and with the numbers which are established by something like uh, this one with traceability chain through, uh, through uh, different kind of calibrations, which are, of course, uh, done by the accredited laboratories. When I say accredited, I'm repeating it's by the ISO 70025 then we don't have a problem that we have to repeat the test in each other uh, hospital, et cetera, et cetera. So what are we doing? We are not, uh, we are not uh, it's much easier for the patient. We are not spending more money. And of course, we have a uh, sure and accurate diagnosis. So some example of it, it is a medical device inspection laboratory. It started in two, uh, two, uh, 2014 a small size enterprise. Uh, the laboratory at the beginning was accredited for the institution, uh, Institute of, uh, for Accreditation of our country, per uh, ISO 70020. After that, it is appointed by the National Metrology Institute. And of course, it's certified by, uh, by in this case, by the Bureau of Veritas. What are we doing there? We are doing now inspection of defibrillators, ECG devices, inspection of pediatric and neonate incubators, therapeutic ultrasound, infusion pumps, uh, mechanical ventilators, uh, then perfuser pumps, patient monitors, uh, blood pressure measurement, uh, anesthesia machines, dialysis machines, uh, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, all of our uh, etalons are in fact calibrated, uh, per, uh, are in fact manufactured from the Flug Biomedical, EMT, and uh, MESA labs, and they are all calibrated per ISO 7020. These are the sum of the etalons which are used for for testing of those medical devices and this lab is one of the labs which is in fact uh, recognized as a notified body also for those tests uh, i i put it here that verification and inspection is uh, almost the, uh, it's not almost it is the same terms but uh, when we are talking in metrological uh, metrological uh, field we say verification but when you go in accreditation part, when you go, uh, when you read the standards, the, this term verification is written as inspection. 
Uh, how the process, what are the process steps, for example, now when some uh, healthcare institution wants to do uh, verification or inspection of medical devices? So first of all, a healthcare institution sends formal request for verification of medical devices. Then the request is being uh, evaluated by our inspection laboratories. And uh, if it is approved, they appoint uh, the people and the people who will go and measure those devices. Then, then the verification uh, process begins. And immediately when the qualified personnel perform verification process, they send uh, immediately results. They wrote immediately results in a uh, software, which is in fact online database. So uh, now we have not just that we are measuring directly there, we have in fact real time the change of all of those parameters and we have the measurement in each me metrology point of each of these medical devices from year to year. Because when the medical device or any kind of uh, devices with the measuring function, when they are part of the legal metrology, then per the law, you must do uh, annual ver verification or inspection of those devices per appointed and accredited laboratory there. So how this uh, software is looking, it, it's look like this one. It, we call it eVerlab and uh, that, that's in fact online when you go to, when you go to our website. Uh, you can log in so each healthcare institution can write their, their, their uh, username and the password and they get then the measurement of all of their this is how it looked like. So they have, in fact, verification, library, some kind of reports, uh, surveys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they can they can check and they can uh, uh, they can look up to uh, each institution. They can look each to group of devices, manufactured device, when the verification is done, what the number of certificates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for example, uh, if you are an employee of the Verlab, then you can see the all institution there. But of course, if you are working in some concrete healthcare institution, then you can see just the information about your institution, in fact, about your medical devices. So this is how it looks like, in fact. Uh, so you can see in this, uh, in this case, what kind of devices are in fact uh, presented here. In this case, these are the, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, these are the, the, the the, the defibrillators here so they can see uh, for uh, when the, when those uh, guys are going and when they enter those data and when you want to check those data on in this database you are able in fact to see in each point from the first time when this device is a measurement what was the uh, number of the first point second point third point etc etc independence how it's written there so when you have many institutions for example for the whole country and when you have many uh, many devices then of course uh, you are getting different kind uh, of ideas how to use those databases and uh, I will show you later on how you can use it. And of course from this left side you can see also the, some results, uh, how many in percentage was uh, accurate devices, how many of devices was faulty, etc. etc. So there is the whole one uh, numerical analysis from the, from, for each medical device and for each measurement point. Based on that, so when we have this database established and when we have this software which is working there, then we have also the list, and this is publicly uh, available, the list of all healthcare institutions where the customers, in fact, in this case, it's patient, can go and check uh, where are the medical devices are good and where they are not using, where they are not good. When I say good, I mean it's, uh, that those devices are inspected and tested by the law because when it is in legal metrology you have to do it by the law and the, for example with the green it is shown that all devices are in fact uh, inspected and tested and they are all fine when it is yellow it means that it is in the process of uh, inspection uh, when it is orange it means that uh, inspection uh, is expired it means uh, it passed more than one year that they tested the, uh, their devices per law and the red one that they never uh, done uh, inspection. So the customer now can look and where they want to go and where they want to check their uh, their health. So this is the this is in fact the 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 register online register also additional with the database which is in fact the result of this measurement there. Uh, in part six, I want to show just some of the case study of the results. So. When we started with the measurement, uh, for example, in 2015, you can see we had around 1,200 of devices per year. So uh, in, when, we, when, we, 
check the 2016 in respect and with 2015, we can see that we had 79% uh, of increasement of the number of inspection devices. And after three years, in fact, after two years, uh, that this number is much more, let's say, it's around 3,600. But anyhow, uh, for example, from year to year at the beginning, we had a pretty big, uh, pretty big uh, increase of those inspected devices. But what is, what is more important? Uh, we decreased the faulty rate of medical devices. So, for example, you can see that the average faulty rate decrease is decreased for about 10% in 2016 in, when we compare with the 2015. Then it is uh, decreased for about 2% in, uh, in um, 2016 in respect to 2016, uh, 2017 in respect to 2016. But uh, what is important to see here, it's important to see that this 2% is now on much bigger uh, amount of the data. So this 2% is pretty high number already of devices which are not any more uh, faulty like they were before. Because when it is faulty, it means that any patient could get these uh, could get this diagnosis or the treatment with that faulty devices and uh, also what is important to know that all of those devices which are found as faulty had preventive maintenance and had service from the uh, authorized, authorized uh, distributor when we are talking about the number uh, if we want to check for example which are the high risk of medical devices, we can see that uh, definitely the number one device is in fact uh, neonatal and pediatric incubators. And uh, still we found in the first year, we found that uh, almost 22%, uh, uh, it is almost 23% uh, we had faulty devices. When we are talking about the anesthesia machine, almost 13%. And uh, about the mechanical respirator, it is almost uh, 13%. In fact, it's 12% uh, of faulty devices we found out, which is pretty, pretty big number, especially if we know that these are the very, very urgent devices. From another point, when we, when we look to the accurate devices, we can see that, for example, the, the, the dialysis machines, defibrillators and ECG are the most accurate devices which is shown during this uh, case study here. So they, are, they all have uh, uh, 95 percent or even more of accurate devices. After, uh, after a few years of inspection and after a few years of the, let's say, of the pushing on the authorized distributor to do the correct services, etc., etc., we found out that the still uh, persisting high risk category of medical devices are still uh, incubators, mechanical ventilators, and anesthesia machines. But now you can see that those numbers are, in fact, uh, much uh, lower and the faulty rates are pretty discrete a pretty dec decrease in the 2018 and 2019. Also, and in, in 2018 and 2019, definitely, we can see that the accuracy trend remained for those, let's say, positive devices, dialysis, defibrillators, and ECG. Uh, what was something uh, unusual, what we didn't really expect, it, but we really get this, uh, that is that we made a really huge, really huge, uh, cost savings for medical institutions on, med on maintenance of medical devices. So we found out that the many authors and distributors are doing some services for the devices which are working well, that they are doing the services for devices where they shouldn't even touch anything, where everything is, doing, uh, is uh, working fine. And then institution uh, stopped uh, paying some things because they see that their devices are working very well and they just started inviting those uh, authors and distributors in the service just where they, where they see that something is uh, not good. Of course, those prices of the testing now, the medical device, because it's uh, established by the country, are, uh, of course, much lower than the tests that they call it attestations or attests uh, from uh, manufacturer and uh, authors and distributors. So, for example, for the clinical centers and the hospitals, we had more than 70% of the cost savings in one year period in, uh, of maintenance of medical devices, which are the few millions for each hospital, which is something what we didn't, let's say, didn't plan to make it, but that was also the result. So, we, we increased the diagnose accuracy of diagnosis and the treatments by the increasing the accuracy of medical devices. 
we increase also the accuracy of uh, diagnosis and uh, treatment, but also we decrease we decrease the the cost the cost for the maintenance of medical device. So we got in fact win win position in this case. These are the some example of the cost benefits which I will skip in this case here. In fact, yeah. Uh, based on this database, and when we started looking on this database, which I showed, which is in fact Eber Lab Calling, uh, we started with uh, thinking, what can we do here? So the first part, we, we created two studies. The first study is in fact uh, medical devices of the, of the measuring system, and we implemented it by introduction of uh, medical devices in a legal metrology framework. And second one is in fact the study where we wanted to do the periodical inspection of medical devices. And yes, we established a lab which started doing periodical inspection of medical devices. Some of the books which I already mentioned are published and more than 20 articles are published too. Uh, of course, very interesting thing is that we started with uh, these, uh, these uh, IEEE standards, which I, which I already mentioned there. But we, we, we become on one question, which is very interesting now, uh, nowadays. It is how to manage the change and understand the present and predict the future. Of course, many of you are, are already thinking about the neural network and the machine learning algorithms. And yes, uh, by, uh, by anal uh, analyzing those data and those measurements, which we got uh, through this uh, annual verification or inspection, we found out that we can, by uh, using the machine learning and neural networks, we can predict those values of those medical devices, and we can pred even predict when some of those devices will have the failure. So now, uh, and we published uh, some papers, these are the just some of those papers which are in fact uh, from this field, but now there is in preparation many of those uh, papers, even we are going two steps deeper in this, for example, for defibrillators, we are in fact able now to predict when there is a failure, which component of device in fact uh, will, will, will broke or will stop working properly. So this is something what is really, really one huge, uh, huge project and we are doing pretty actively in this, but all of this is just possible, of course, when you have established an accurate and good measurement there. So that is uh, all what I plan to talk today. I hope so that, Luis, that we are under the time what, what you planned here. So I'm open now for all questions, if there is any questions. Thank you very much, Omir. Uh, it was really, really interesting to talk to you on the technology content, some scenarios in the real life, and also the case studies that you have presented. Thank you very much. Um, is uh, now we have a couple of minutes for questions and answers. So if anyone wants to ask uh, Dr. Almer a question, they can either activate their microphone. They can do that on their main menu. Okay, uh, I can I can answer on the first question. I have a question from the Pedro Gonzalez. Uh, he asked, uh, "Why are you using verification term instead of calibration?" Uh, verification and calibration are not the same terms. Verification or, is, or, is, uh, or inspection is defined per ISO 7020, while the calibration is defined per ISO uh, 7025. It's totally two different terms. Calibration, when you want to check is it there, and when you want to fix it, to make it that it's working good, and then you got the numbers with your, uh, traceability, with your traceability, of course, and with your, uh, all your measurements are in, are in fact with the uh, established uh, uncertainty, measurement uncertainty. While verification, you are using in fact a uh, much more accurate device to check is the one, one, is the two, two, et cetera, et cetera. And the second question is, don't you think that ISO 13485 should be uh, the standard for medical device labs who perform verification and maintenance and ISO 70 for those who perform medical device Calibration. Yeah, in fact, uh, medical device calibration and any kind of calibration, it's calling a laboratory for calibration. So is it in medical device or whatever it is there, it's uh, 70025, while 13485 is in fact the standard, which is, uh, which is in fact for the quality assurance of medical devices. And of course, it doesn't any, uh, it doesn't any touch with uh, any labs or anything similar there. Uh, the second question, third question is, thank you for very reasonable information presentation, especially with the case study. I would request to receive this presentation in PDF. 
I will help to motivate decision uh, at present. We are not using such a system. Thank you again. Okay, Luis, uh, I will send you this presentation in PDF so you can share it with everyone. Sure, we will also upload the recording in our website just uh, so everyone can know. Right. Uh, anybody else can activate their microphone or they can use the chat to ask any other questions to Dr. Owen. Yes, uh, will, you will get the link in your email. Uh, I assume you registered in the in the first um, window, so you will get a response with the email. Yes, uh, we will send the presentation as well. Everything will be in the CED website, which is ced.ifb.org. Uh, question from Anna. Uh, here is one question also about uh, how is this verification different from what biomedical technologies perform as a part of their routine maintenance work? Well, uh, routine maintenance of medical devices is uh, something what is written by the by the medical uh, by the producer by the manufacturer. In fact, and that is something what what they are checking what they are doing there. For example, uh, on those routine uh, maintenance, they they should first of all check. They they call it auto check or independence from device up to device. They are checking all the points which are, which are written in fact uh, there. And every uh, most of those devices, let's say those modern medical devices. It's uh, all made by the software, so you are checking all the sensors. Is it working or well, very well? And uh, if everything is fine, if everything is going well, they are not touching anything. If there is any kind of the error, they are going uh, up to another point. Then they are measuring. They are opening devices, and they are in fact the measuring why some such kind of the sensor is not working well. What they should do it, etc. When they found out which one is not uh, working. Uh, very well. Then they are doing even the calibration of those devices. They are they are uh, they are uh, they are, they are drifting some of those points. They are the changing the, some currents on the potentiometer, etc., etc. Uh, on inspection and on verification, there is no touching of that kind of devices. You are uh, you are just measuring the output parameter. So you are measuring, in fact, what is happening with your device. Uh, in fact, what your device is giving directly to the patient. For example, here is the question. What are you doing for mechanical, uh, me mechanical ventilators? For the mechanical ventilators, the most important terms which are going directly to that patient are in fact the volume, the oxygen concentration, uh, on different kinds of ventilators, there is no volume, there is in fact the pressure of the flow, etc., etc. So you are really measuring just oxygen concentration, you are measuring, for example, the, the speed of, uh, of it, you are measuring the volume, you are measuring the pressure, flow, etc., etc., but you are really measuring it. You are taking outside the patient, you are connecting that uh, outside device, you are connecting your mechanical ventilator on that devices, and then you are, in fact, checking all of those values there. But when you are doing, uh, when you are doing, for example, routine maintenance, your sensors, which are already on that devices, they are giving you information by measuring some currents, voltages, resistance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, about your device. So the difference is that you are taking another outside device, which is calling etalons, which is calibrated, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you are measuring outside. You are measuring outside um, parameters. In fact, the parameters which are the most important for the patient. For example, in uh, defibrillators, the most important part is in fact uh, is in fact uh, energy. So the most important for the doctor and for the patient is when you said 200 joules, I want 200 joules. And then you took and you shocked your patient with the 200 joules. If, and it is very important, is it 200 joules or it is 150, it is 300 joules or what is, what, whatever it is there. So uh, when you are doing, for example, inspection of those devices, you are taking your etalons and you are starting from the zero up to 316 and checking in each point in each point, uh, is it really 0, 0, 10, 10, 100, 100, or 100, 2, 3, 4, or 97, 98, 99, or whatever it is, but it must be under the defined ranges. But when you are checking, in fact, uh, by the routine maintenance, then you are checking, again, 
per, uh, per using the sensors and information of the sensor by using the software that uh, is, are your sensors reading correct values from your devices? And there is, there is many, many of the, many, many of those uh, examples where it shows that it is not reading very good. I hope so that I answered on this question. Uh, uh, when the second, then another one question, what about for diagnosis, uh, diagnostic analyzers, laboratories, does this verif verification applies? Uh, in this case, there is, uh, in this case, uh, those analyzers, you cannot say that they are medical device with the measuring function. Only the devices which has measuring function can be the part of the metrology. So that's the reason why they are not under that part, because there must be something what you can measure, like in defibrillator, it's energy, in a mechanical ventilator, it is a volume or it is, a, a, I don't know, pressure, et cetera, et cetera. But there is another standards which they applied. It is, I think, uh, one, uh, one, five, four, eight, five, something like that one, which is in fact for the laboratory there. Uh, this will also to communicate this in. Um, uh, yeah, when we are talking about the countries, uh, I'm, uh, I have done the similar thing in more than 20 countries all over the world. So yes, the many countries are, intro uh, are introducing the medical device in legal metrology, or even from another point of view, they are in fact, uh, they are in fact uh, establishing now the notified bodies, and those notified bodies must have uh, laboratories which are in fact doing inspection and which has in fact the calibrated metalons. We will examine the meaning. Where you, um, are you doing a calibration services? What do you uh, um, uh, are you running calibration service? No, the calibration service uh, is run in, in fact by the by the by the by the accredited laboratories. There is all over the world, and also by the and, uh, not uh, by the National Metrology Institute of each country. Uh, what do you think about our test equipment that we send out annually for calibration to metrology? Yeah, of course, every year you must send your uh, calibration, calibration, uh, your, your test equipment to, to uh, calibrate because only if you calibrate device in accredited laboratory, but it is, it is very important. For example, when you go, in, uh, when you go to check some kind of the uh, accredited laboratories, when I say accredited, I mean, again, per ISO 7025, they said, yes, we can do, for example, the flow, but you must check in which point they can do it. And you must check in which range they can do it. And you must check also with what accuracy they can do it. If their accuracy is, this, is less or the same as your device, then don't go in that lab because they cannot calibrate your device, your testing equipment, because maybe your accuracy is bigger than, uh, than of their uh, calibrating, uh, calibrating device. From another point of view, if you want, for example, to calibrate your uh, tester for defibrillator in, from zero up to 360 joules, and you must ask them in all what point they can calibrate it. Can they calibrate in, in each point in zero, 10, 20? If they can, it must be proved in their calibration certificate. So it is, it is public available. And also, you must, if you want to do it from the zero to 360, of uh, calibration of your testing equipment, you must also check, are they able to cover the whole range? Because maybe they can cover just from, I don't know, from 10 up to 200. Then your device will not have calibration certificate for the zero and 360 because they are not able. They can perform it, but you must check, are they accredited for that, for that, those points too. So that's something what you really have to take care. So take care. Is the, is the equipment uh, with bigger accuracy than your testing equipment, than the equipment which you are sending to, to calibration? Can they cover all the points which you need? And can they cover the whole range what you need? But around we have space for two more questions. Uh, 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 Nicolas asked me, there is now, I think, eight eight, uh, eight uh, notified bodies, which are in fact recognized per EU. So when you, when you Google there in last few days, there was three or four, they're already recognized. So when you, when you Google now and when you write uh, approved notified bodies in EU, now you will find the, those, those notified bodies. 
great. And I see that Yogo uh, does want to ask a question, so I just asked him if he can activate his microphone or text the question onto the chat. Uh, here is one question. What were the obstacles or difficulties to implement this verification system? Oh, look, uh, of course, uh, so everything new is in fact the change. So every, uh, people do not like the change. Even those changes are positive ones. They really, don't uh, they really don't like the changes. So there was a few problems. The first problem was with the authorized distributors because uh, they that that's happened the first time that someone is really checking them before they have done whatever they want and they said this device is working this is not working you must fix something you don't need to fix something etc etc and the hospital pay everything now they have some uh, the lab which is in fact uh, appointed and recognized per the country so this lab is in fact uh, under uh, is above of uh, authorized distributors so that was the problem the second problem was that hospital has agreement with and contracts with all of those institutions, with all of those authors and distributors. And uh, they, uh, they had in their contract that they are doing uh, preventive maintenance, attestation and calibration. And now why they have to pay something additional over there. And then you had a lot of, uh, a lot of jobs and a lot of talk to explain them that, that they don't have to do any more attestation because now attestation is covered uh, is covered per, uh, per uh, inspection uh, and legal metrology rules. And also what is also very important to, uh, to mention, that is many of those uh, hospitals, uh, because th this is changed for them, they had a situation that they said, you know, but the, but the manufacturers said that we have to do this, 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 and this. That's recommendation. Everything what is written there it's written as a recommendation. For example, the good example is a fridge at your home. When you read uh, instructions for the fridge, it said you must call every year uh, authors and distributors to clean your cooler or something. What I don't know what, what is written there, but I'm sure that 99% of you are not calling anyone to check your cooler or something on the fridge until it's broken, until it's not working. In healthcare institution, they wrote it, but from another point of view, when we are talking about inspection, it's low so the law of each country is always above the of any recommendation of manufacture hi you talk about uh, standardization and i have a question about this okay. uh, you are using the method of the uh, service manuals or do you have a, a standard a standardized method for each kind of family of devices that you are testing in example you have a general a general uh, method for ventilators or anesthesia machines or something else, or do you use the specific uh, service manual for each unit that you have at your hospital? Thank you for your question. Yeah, when we started with developing those procedures and the bylaws for, for example, uh, ventilators for anesthesia machines, etc., uh, they checked the, the people who was uh, working on this, they checked the, all of those service manuals, etc., etc., and they said all the medical, uh, for example, mechanical ventilators, has flow from this range up to this range with this accuracy. All of them has the volume from this range to this range with that accuracy, and they put it into the law and in the bylaws and the procedure. So the, for each me mechanical ventilators, the procedure is the same. So you are measuring the volume, you are measuring the pressure, flow, concentration of oxygen, or whatever it is there. It's not important which one producer is there because the function of each uh, mechanical ventilator is to perform mechanical ventilation for the patient. Okay, well, it seems that we're running out of time, so I would invite everyone else that has a question to ask through uh, this email. And we will provide a link to a special form um, entry that we have on our website so that everyone can ask our Almer the questions that they would like. Um, well, uh, um, do you have anything else to add? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Almir. What a great job. Everybody uh, clapping here. Um, thank you, Dom. Wonderful job. Uh, as I, I put into the chat, perhaps not everybody saw it, that uh, we are having our next uh, webinar on health technology management, that first competency of uh, the clinical engineers uniquely have. We're going to have it on uh, March 18th. We're going to send out an outline of that uh, 
presentation that actually has th uh, three or four or five of us involved in it uh, within a week by, by Monday, the February 24th. And what we hope you can do with that outline is uh, go invite your country uh, colleagues uh, and let them know that this training is coming. And then some countries are actually gonna take that presentation and then alter it and put it in the local language and use it, you know, some of their examples. But th the main point is not only to talk about the, the unique clinical engineering competencies that we have around the world and that we can contribute to healthcare in our countries with every day, but also to talk about the leadership aspects of those. So we're gonna show you best practice examples actually from Albania, from Mexico, um, and from China, but we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the leadership aspects of those uh, unique ways of doing health technology management in your country. So we look forward to talk, talking to you next month. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Arthur and Tom. By our team, this is everything that we offer today. So we are happy to keep hearing from you on email, on social media, and as well, uh, we will provide all the information uh, regarding this recording and also the yeah, presentation and also the forum link so that you can ask Dr. Alamir any question you have. Right, guys, thank you very much. You guys have a great and wonderful week and thank you for signing in. Bye. Thank you very much to all of you and have a nice week. Thank you. Thank you, Almir. Thank you, Tom.